Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Saturday, July 10th, 2021. What a joy it truly is to be able to spend this time together with you in God's word as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. We begin today by reading Psalm 125. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion. It cannot be shaken. It remains forever. The mountains surround Jerusalem and the Lord surrounds his people, both now and forever. The scepter of the wicked will not remain over the land allotted to the righteous, so that the righteous will not apply their hands to injustice. Do what is good, Lord, to the good, to those whose hearts are upright. But as for those who turn aside to crooked ways, the Lord will banish them with the evildoers. Peace be with Israel. As we continue to read uh, through the book of Judges, today we are going to hear the beginning of the account of the judgeship of Gideon. The Israelites did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Lord handed them over to Midian seven years, and they oppressed Israel. Because of Midian, the Israelites made hiding places for themselves in the mountains, caves, and strongholds. Whenever the Israelites planted crops, the Midianites, Amalekites, and the people of the east came and attacked them. They encamped against them and destroyed the produce of the land, even as far as Gaza. They left nothing for Israel to eat, as well as no sheep, ox, or donkey. For the Midianites came with their cattle and their tents like a great swarm of locusts. They and their camels were without number, and they entered the land to lay waste to it. So Israel became poverty-stricken because of Midian, and the Israelites cried out to the Lord. When the Israelites cried out to him because of Midian, the Lord sent a prophet to them. He said to them, This is what the Lord God of Israel says. I brought you out of Egypt and out of the place of slavery. I rescued you from the power of Egypt and the power of all who oppressed you. I drove them out before you and gave you their land. I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not fear the gods of the Amorites whose land you live in. But you did not obey me. The angel of the Lord came and he sat under the oak that was in Ophrah, which belonged to Joash the Abiezerite. His son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press in order to hide it from the Midianites. Then the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, The Lord is with you, valiant warrior. Gideon said to him, Please, my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened? And where are all his wonders that our ancestors told us about? They said, Hasn't the Lord brought us out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and handed us over to Midian. The Lord turned to him and said, go in the strength you have and deliver Israel from the grasp of Midian. I am sending you. He said to him, please, Lord, how can I deliver Israel? Look, my family is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the youngest in my father's family. But I will be with you, the Lord said to him. You will strike Midian down as if it were one man. Then he said to him, if I have found favor with you, give me a sign that you are speaking to me. Please do not leave this place until I return to you. Let me bring my gift and set it before you. And he said, I will stay until you return. So Gideon went and prepared a young goat and unleavened bread from a half bushel of flour. He placed the meat in a basket and the broth in a pot. He brought them out and offered them to him under the yoke. The angel of God said to him, Take the meat with the unleavened bread, put it on this stone, and pour the broth on it. So he did that. The angel of the Lord extended the tip of the staff that was in his hand and touched the meat and the unleavened bread. Fire came up from the rock and consumed the meat and the unleavened bread. Then the angel of the Lord vanished from his sight. When Gideon realized that he was the angel of the Lord, he said, Oh no, Lord God. I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. But the Lord said to him, peace to you. Don't be afraid, for you will not die. 
So Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and called it, the Lord is peace. And, it's, and it is still in Ophrah of the Abiezerites today. As we continue to travel with Paul and Barnabas, we are going to see them complete their first missionary journey. And then we will also see a very, dis very important discussion arise among the people in the congregation in Antioch, uh, an issue that is going to have very great importance for the future of the church going forward. This is an issue that will be uh, discussed and then decided on at the very first church council, which will take place in Jerusalem. Some Jews came from Antioch and Iconium, and when they won over the crowds, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, thinking he was dead. After the disciples gathered around him, he got up and went into the town. The next day, he left with Barnabas for Derby. After they had preached the gospel in that town and made many disciples, they returned to Lystra, to Iconium, and to Antioch, strengthening the disciples by encouraging them to continue in the faith and by telling them, it is necessary to go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. When they had appointed elders for them in every church and prayed with fasting, they committed them to the Lord in whom they had believed. They passed through Pisidia and came to Pamphylia. After they had spoken the word in Perga, they went down to Italia. From there, they sailed back to Antioch, where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work they had now completed. After they arrived and gathered the church together, they reported everything God had done with them, and that he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. And they spent a considerable time with the disciples. Some men came down from Judea and began to teach the brothers, Unless you are circumcised according to the custom prescribed by Moses, you cannot be saved. After Paul and Barnabas had engaged them in serious argument and debate, Paul and Barnabas and some others were appointed to go up to the apostles and elders in Jerusalem about the issue. When they had been sent on their way by the church, they passed through both Phoenicia and Samaria, describing in detail the conversion of the Gentiles, and they brought great joy to all the brothers and sisters. When they arrived at Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church, the apostles and the elders, and they reported all that God had done with them. But some of the believers who belonged to the party of the Pharisees stood up and said, it is necessary to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Our writing for today is two citations from the Lutheran Confessions. The first one is from the Solid Declaration of the Formula of Concord. The false apostles pushed circumcision in order to establish their false doctrine that the works of the law were necessary for righteousness and salvation. They misused circumcision to confirm their error in people's minds. Therefore, Paul says that he would not yield even for an hour in order that the truth of God, of the gospel, might continue unimpaired. And then we read from the apology or the defense of the Augsburg Confession. We suppose that the adversaries would defend human traditions on other grounds, yet we did not think that this would happen, that they would condemn this article. We do not merit the forgiveness of sins or grace by celebrating human traditions. Since this article has been condemned, we have an easy and straightforward case. The adversaries are now openly Judaizing, and they are openly hindering the gospel by the doctrine of demons. For scripture calls traditions doctrines of demons when it is taught that religious rites serve to merit the forgiveness of sins and grace. For they are then clouding over the gospel, Christ's benefit, and the righteousness of faith. The gospel teaches that through faith we receive freely, for Christ's sake, the forgiveness of sins and are reconciled to God. The adversaries, on the other hand, appoint a, another mediator, these traditions. By these, they want to gain forgiveness of sins. By these, they want to reconcile God's anger. But Christ clearly says, in vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. 
Our hymn for today is a stanza from the hymn, In God, My Faithful God. In God, my faithful God, I trust when dark my road. Great woes may overtake me, yet he will not forsake me. My troubles he can alter. His hand lets nothing falter. And we pray. Lord and giver of all good things, the same powers that crucified Jesus persecuted Paul as he bore on his body the marks of Jesus for preaching Christ crucified. Give us faith to believe that no matter what suffering we endure for the sake of Christ, it is all gift and it is all good, so that with Paul we may rejoice in sufferings as we bear on our bodies the marks of Jesus, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time together with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.